Marfa. Going live uh, now. <laughs> I see some of you in places where it looks, it looks dark. Marfa, Texas. Is it dark in Marfa, Texas? No. Okay. You're muted. Okay. So we're just, okay. Hey, everybody. Uh, I'm going to do my little um, preamble. Um, or if ever, has everybody been to watch me work before? Or isn't there anybody who is, is relatively new? Carla, you're relatively new. Gabby, okay, so we'll, I'll do my little spiel so that we all have some kind of idea about what we're doing. And if this is the one place five days a week where you know what you're supposed to be doing, it's, it's okay, <laughs> it's okay. Okay, I'm Susan Lori Parks. Uh, this is Watch Me Work. Watch Me Work is a show where we talk about your work and your creative process. I'm a writer. I write lots of things, plays, movies, teleplays, songs, what, all those kinds of stuff. I'm also the master writer at the Public Theater in New York City. I've been doing this show for 11 years. And usually I do it in the lobby of the Public Theater with an assembled group of, of writers mostly. Um, and we all work together. Um, and since um, this uh, uh, Corona thing is going down, we're doing it live streaming. Uh, courtesy of HowlRound. Audrey, you sending me a message? Oh, yes. Okay, <laughs> great. Okay. Um, we're, um, so I just want to give a big shout out. Thank you to the Public Theater. Thank you to HowlRound. Together, they're working together with all of us and helping this happen. And we're, we're very appreciative. Um, uh, so Watch Me Work is a show. Um, and it has two, two aspects of the show, or maybe three aspects. It has the audience. We are all the audience. The two other important aspects of it has action and it has dialogue. We will create together the action of our show right now by, uh, we will be doing the action together. And what that means is we work together for 20 minutes. One of my favorite things, 20 minute, my little timer here. I'm gonna set the timer. We're gonna work together for 20 minutes. You can work on anything you want. Okay, and then when the timer goes off, we're going to create the dialogue together by you guys asking me questions about your creative process. Okay, um, we don't have uh, the, the bandwidth of the time to, um, for you actually to read aloud something that you're working on. We don't have that kind of um, time uh, or, or, you know, because we want to try to get to as many folks as we can. So um, my, my husband and my son are playing chess at the other end of this dining room table, which is my office. Um, but um, uh, anyway, we don't have time to critique your work specifically, but we do have plenty of time. Nine and nine, stay, stay by, hey, yeah. We do have time to um, talk to you about your creative process, okay? Which, uh, and that will be things, we'll be talking about things that will help everybody, okay? Um, anything else? Audrey, one of our, one of our moderators with Miranda, we're, they're going to help us. Hey, everybody. Sorry, we did something a little bit new today where you are all muted and we'll continue to unmute you, but we've changed the settings a little bit. So sorry if that confused everyone. Um, it was a little bit of a different try. Um, but so if you do have questions to ask as before, please click the button that says raise your hand. If you're in the Zoom, it should be under a participant tab if it's not immediately on your screen. Um, if you're watching the stream uh, on HowlRound.tv, you'll be able to ask questions via the public theater's Twitter or Instagram, and also via Watch Me Work's Twitter, which is at Watch Me Work SLP, hashtag HowlRound, which is H-O-W-L-R-O-U-N-D. Um, and that's it. All right. Um, so uh, we've all got something to work on, even if it's just random writing or thoughts you want to assemble or your great American novel or whatever. I'm looking right now for a blank page in my very expensive, ha ha, not notebook. Ah, there we go. All right. So I'm going to set the timer and we've got 20 minutes. We're going to work together. Okay. So here we go.
Hey. Oh, I like your tone so much. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Oh, all right. So uh, now we, we do the, the dialogue part of the show where um, you guys ask me some questions. Anybody got a question about your creative process? So we've got Hasana I'm going to pull up right now. Hello. All right, are you unmuted? Hi, I'm yes. so sorry if I mispronounced your name. No, no, that was great, Hassan. Okay. Yeah. Um, so my question is this: I have I have a play that's going to receive a workshop uh, with a dramaturg and a director and actors, and it's a it's a one act play. It's about sixty pages. Um, what would be your advice? What's a good strategy to make use of such a luxurious amount of time? I have three weeks to work on it with this group of people. Cool. Um, and I've never really been in a situation quite like that. I've had plays produced, but not okay. this kind of luxury of three weeks. A luxury of a three-week workshop. Will you guys be gathering physically together or will you be... Um... No, we'll be having to do it virtually. Uh, uh -huh, like uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, okay. Do you... It's Well, congratulations for getting a workshop because it's Thank really, you. really great. And you you know the director, you've worked with them? No, the, the director will be chosen, the dramatic will be chosen. Okay. But and the, and and with I'm sorry. Tell me again. With actors, you'll be working with, or yes. Okay. So, do you know anybody on the team at all? No, no. In my in my submission for the workshop, I just said it's I'm by myself. So they get to choose the the organizing body will get to choose uh, the rest okay. of the team. Okay. Okay. Um, I would suggest since they're. I mean, they might turn out to be people that you know, which would which could be cool, you know. Um, but I would suggest uh, as soon as you find out who they are, right? Yeah. Start a conversation. You know, because it's such a, a wonderful opportunity that you have that you want to get as much of a sort of a common ground in there as possible. You know, does that make sense? Yeah. So. So you wouldn't want to start on day one with like, hi, these are, this is me and this is you and that kind of thing, you know, because they will have read your play um, and you will have probably, you know, seen their resumes and maybe seen pieces of their work or whatever. But just to kind of, you know, you guys are, it, it's like dating or so, you know, you kind of want to have a few conversations, right, before you get in bed together. You know what I'm saying? So have as many conversations as you can. And while you're talking to them, you know, enjoy the conversation, but also listen to your, your, your gut, you know, that small, still voice within. So if you have a director who says a lot, yeah, I don't know, Sonny, I don't know, yeah, it's good. You know, someone who maybe doesn't have a really strong direction, just, just be mindful of that, you know, just be like, okay, so this is a person, she, he, they, or, are, are wanting me to do my thing, you know, just be aware of how they are interacting with you. Okay. Right. And how then you respond to that. Um, because again, that's going to help you get as much, it's so much like dating. It's going to help you get so much out of the time when the workshop is happening. Um, I'm guessing that maybe the actors won't be chosen right off, you know, You'll hear about the director first, perhaps. I'm guessing. This is my, my guessing. I'm not entirely certain of the of the exact procedure of the of this of this. Okay. Uh, because it's a it's a new uh, organization, and I haven't. Uh -huh. I, I don't. I don't uh -huh. really know exactly how they do it. Uh -huh. um, but um, I'm assuming that eventually we'll have the whole team assembled, and they'll okay. be quite okay. active. Okay. So I just wondered if there were like exercises that you would suggest in the in the workshop. Oh, I see. I understand. To get to get the most out of, like, to, to help understand. me take it to the next level. I understand. Um, my favorite exercise in a in a workshop for a play that I've written, or even a screenplay or a teleplay, or even a song I'm working on with my band, is to work on the material. You know what I mean? So a lot of actors might come in or directors might come in and say, wow, Hassan, this is a, this is a great play. Let's do some improvs around it and kind of discover what's going on. And you're like, well, I've got 60 pages, you know? Um, my suggestion is to have them read the play aloud and talk about it, you know? Find places where you bump, you know, or where they bump on it. Have lots of conversations, 
you know right. if there if there are parts of the play that you just can't get your mind around maybe those are places like you know scene three you know maybe you want really want to work on scene three and maybe you want to open it up and do some some improv stuff or have you know have some conversation to open it up but if you really like what you've got um i would say start by reading the play and talking about it and maybe if they need it filling them in on maybe some historical or cultural context if they need that if they don't you know if they're all on the same page as you you know that's cool um so. it's it's what you enjoy if you enjoy, if you're a writer who enjoys giving an actor your, one of your scenes and having them do an improv around it then do that if you're a little more hesitant then I would say let them work on the written page that you've provided initially. Okay, you can get a lot out of just having people read your play to you and then talking right. about it. You can get a lot out of that. And then you go home and I mean, you go home, you are home. <laughs> but you, you, <laughs> you, you sort of turn off your computer and you reflect on it. Or they give you questions. I didn't understand why, why Josephine did that. You know, why, why is she doing that? I don't get it, you know? Just create a, a, a feeling of trust where you can talk freely about what's working, what's not working. Right. You know, feel free to rewrite. You can rewrite a lot during this three weeks. You can bring in new pages every single day. You yes. Know? Is there uh, anything, is it, go is ahead, it, go ahead. Is it all right to, to sort of say, uh, okay, I want to pause the workshop a little bit. I need to go and do a little bit of more research. Or I need to go and have a think time and come back a day later. Sure. Uh, is, it, is, sure. that, is that sort of acceptable? And, of course, uh, of course. Yeah. Yes, Asani, it's, it's very acceptable to say, I want to, I want to push pause for a day, do some more research and come back. I mean, provided, you know, that they, they have the kind of time, maybe you can stop the clock on the research, on the, on the workshop and then, and then continue it or maybe you just take a day for a writing day. I mean, I'm, I'm sure lots of people, we do that all the time. You take a day for a writing day or a research day, you know, and then come back. You're totally, totally cool to do that. It's your workshop, right? right? They're gathering together for you, okay? I would say though, you know, you should get mad respect for having provided this beautiful play for them. You know, remember that, remember that. I mean, they're, while they're doing you a genuine and beautiful service, you are also doing them a service. You have done, in my opinion, what is the hardest part of the job. You've sat alone in your office or your room and you've written this thing out of, you know, there was nothing and now you've written this beautiful play. You're bringing it to them. And um, I personally, I always like to see what actors and a director and a dramaturg do in response to the work. Great. So say if I've written a play that has like uh, the civil war in it, you know what I mean? It's not necessarily helpful for me if the dramaturg comes in and she's a civil war scholar and she's gonna tell me all kinds of things about the civil war. If, you know, if they're not specific to my play, then it's not as helpful as it could be. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, not to say that the, this dramaturg isn't really smart, but she's not being helpful to me in my writing process. Okay. So yeah. just try to channel everybody in the direction of the material that you have provided. Right. Does anybody, I know we've got um, a director, Rob, I, I'm going to call on somebody. Is Rob here from Marfa? He's a director. Do you have any tips? I'm calling on somebody. Audrey, could we find uh, Rob? Yes, give me one second. Okay. Um, I've clicked Just to kind of toast, toast. He's button. always got great tips for um, play mm -hmm. development. Rob is unmuted. Oh, Rob, thank you. Rob, do you have any? Uh, do you have any tips for Hassani as he goes into his play development workshop? I thought your ideas were really great as far as hearing the play for the first time. It may be the first time he's going to actually hear the words spoken out loud. So taking, getting the most out of that opportunity because each actor is going to bring something to a role that he wrote and the director. So taking the most out of 
having that opportunity to be with all of those people and getting what they have to say about that thing that he made is of great significance for that moment, that workshop. Thanks. Is that cool? And and you can always check back in with us. You know, we're your squad. To watch <laughs> we work. So um, always check back in with us if it's happening. You know, in the next couple of weeks. You know, we can always give you feedback about something went down in the workshop that you were excited about or not so excited about. Okay. Great. Great. Okay. That's wonderful. It's okay. been really great hearing you talk these last oh, couple of days. I really enjoyed it. It's been Thank wonderful. You. Well, Thank we you. appreciate everybody here. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. All right, the next person we've got is Vita. Um, are you unmuted? Am I unmuted? Can you hear yeah, me? We hear All right. you. All right, great, thank you. Um, okay, first of all, thank you, uh, Susan Laurie. This is thank incredible, you. really, seriously. Plus, oh, thank the you. best eyeglasses I've seen on anyone oh. in a really long time, so thank you for that. It's a real <laughs> gift. We'll tell you um, after your question, but go ahead. Seriously, I mean, it's transcendent. Okay, so um, my question is a weird, <laughs> my question is a weird one, um, but I guess they all are. Um, I am self-taught as a playwright and I started in fiction way before that. And I was really working hard, like full-time job, getting up at four in the morning, wow. doing my writing, you know, exhausted. Um, and then uh, long story short, the, there was this, well, I'm trying to think how I can say this without getting in trouble, but there were some very famous people who evidently were sitting in on rehearsals. And ultimately what happened was they walked off with my play. I was at work. Um, I didn't understand what was going on. This, so I was very exhausted and then this happened. And the, you know, I've had a couple of things like this happen with my work where, I didn't even understand what was going on because I think when you're self-taught, you don't see it coming. You know, you don't have like uh, people who are advising you on what might be going on or what you can do. And I did actually try to protect the work, you know, like I did the things you're supposed to do, but they were so big, these people, that it didn't really matter. And um, they made millions of dollars off of this, by the way, I mean, it, it, it was a huge thing. And it's happened to me also with some videos that I've made. Well, with one video in particular, um, something similar happened. So I'm just wondering like WTF, like what am I supposed to do? Um, and it's also, I, uh, what, what I'm most upset about is it's really uh, getting in my way creatively. Like it's really bothering me. Um, I did try to do something about it, you know, um, and I'm just thinking, like, is this bad karma? Like, <laughs> I do something really fucked up some, at some other point in another lifetime? Or am I just not handling these things the right way? Or how do you stay in your own body and keep moving forward? Because I'm sure you've had experiences where you had a similar feeling. Like, I can't believe this is happening. What do I do, you know? So that's my question. It's an odd one. That's and well, it's a it's a deep one. Um, first of all, I'll, I'm sorry that it happened. And while I didn't do it, I don't think I, did. I didn't no. do it. You know, um, somebody has to say I'm sorry, and I'm happy. I'm I'll, I'm I can be one of the ones to say I'm sorry that that happened to you. Um, I'm also sorry that. Um, that it gets in the way of your process now that's kind of the worst thing I mean those two things you know I mean stealing from from somebody stealing from you is horrible and then having you question yourself everything from is it bad karma which it's not it's oh not. thank you it's not for saying that it's it's not it's just not things th things happen that are that are difficult okay and it's not because you did anything you know in a you know no no um uh but it did happen and and i'm sorry that it happened and i'm sorry that it gets in the way the way of your working now because 
you know, shit happens to all of us. And if we go through, a, you know, we've all got shit ha that happened to us, whether it's specific to our work or our life or our, our, our relationship life or whatever, right? We've all been through, we've all been in that sh shit field, right? Right, I know. Um, and what's the, the, the challenges that we, that we write ourselves, literally, you know, you write yourself, you, you, you get upright again, right? And you, you keep going and we write ourselves in this context. Um, and that's the challenge. And that's why I'm doing this show. And that's what we're here for. So I'm glad you asked those questions. Um, oh. I, you know, what, number one, I wish there was some kind of way that you could get reparations or some kind of you know, from these people who, who took something that you created and it sounds like cut you out of the creative process of it and, and did not allow you to benefit in any way from the gravy of what you so hard, so worked on so hard. I wish there were a way to do that. Um, and in the meantime, let's get you working, right? So, um, you need a protective force shield around you. And maybe it's the protective force shield that, that says, Vita, um, be mindful. Vita, be watchful. Vita, when people say, hey, I mean, this is again, this is the workshop. Asani, you're going into the workshop. You know, sometimes, we, hey, come on, let's have a workshop. And before you know it, uh-oh, you know, right? So just be mindful. That's another thing I didn't even think of. Be mindful going into these workshops. Not everybody is like you or like Rob or like, you know, the public theater, or whatever, who's going to honor you and, and lay out the, the red carpet for you as a creative person. You have to be mindful that there are people in this business who are vampires and they are, uh, they have, um, and it happens in all fields, right? Not just writing and not just playwriting, but in all fields, they have lost their ability to be creative and in the absence of creativity, they have decided to grab for power. And they often uh, approach you with a smile and a lot of niceties. I've run into many of these people. Shit uh. like this is similar shit like this has happened to me. Uh. Yeah, because I'm by nature trusting and generous. I give, look, here I am every day at five o'clock. I'm talking to basically a bunch of strangers going, hey, how can I help you? You know, uh -huh. I got stuff to give. And what I feel, my belief is we have, we have been gifted with each other, right? And our, our job is to give and share, but in a respectful way and not to steal, but not everybody believes that. Okay, so we got to get a protective shield around you. We are your squad here, yeah. right? We are your squad, Vito. We got your back. And you got to do the work. Mm -hmm. So you just have to know that uh, next time you will be more mindful. Okay. Are you, yeah, you, you, you will be more mindful. You've got us to talk to every step of the way. You've got, you know, can I get a witness? You've got at least a hundred today who are watching out for you now. Mm. You got me. Next time it happens, name names it's like the me too movement vita those assholes who get away with that kind of shit have to be mm. named yeah. they cannot they cannot steal like that from hard working artists okay so yeah. you know maybe maybe it's not in, uh, the appropriate for you to name names this time around but next time you got witnesses mm. you name names this person did this to me right you they're very to, powerful yes and so is what's his name, who's now got X number of years for, you know, assaulting, raping those folks, those women. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I know. I'm not saying you, sh you need to do it now, but I, I want you to feel like, mm. I, I want you to know that you're not alone in this. Thank you. In the absence of creative power, they just grab power. Yeah. And they don't they made, care. Yes, go ahead. They made a lot of money off of this. I mean, it's like, it's, it's uh, incredible. <laughs> and I, and I figured it out by watching a documentary about their project. I went, Oh, my God. Like I knew immediately. 
but it, it was, you know, so anyway. What um, happened to your project? Uh, was it just like shelved or what? Yeah, I was trying to get it up elsewhere uh, in San Francisco and I was getting blackballed. And then I realized it's a very small community and um, you know, it's a long story. But anyway, I am afraid of naming a name because I could end up with a lawsuit, but I also know that this happened. So just in case they're all watching, I do know it happened. And um, I tried to do something about it. I mean, I tried to talk to them and all, you know, they have a reputation for being wonderful people. So I did try, but um, you know, it's never gonna, they're never gonna admit it. But, um, uh, or even talk to me probably because they figure it all got buried. But it's just interesting because it seems to be a pattern for me where I think on some level, I'm not respecting my own work because it happened to me a similar thing, although not on the same scale, that was huge. But it happened to me also with uh, a video project where there were some images that were out in the public and then somebody else, you know, so I'm doing something wrong. Like I'm not either not giving myself enough, you know what I'm saying? Well, I think Vita, I think you, you, you said, it. I'm just going to repeat what you said. You are not, you said, I'm not respecting my work enough. Yeah. But I don't know how, how, I don't even know that this is about to happen. Like I, I love my work. So it's not like, I don't understand that, but somehow it's not get. I'm not getting protected. Well, then, then ask for that. Say ask. to yourself, as you write, I respect my work. And when it's out in the world, people know it's mine. Yeah. I respect I, my work. Can I just yeah. mention one thing quickly? I just have to tell you something. A, a very long time ago, I had a job where they sent me to a Franklin Covey uh, seminar. This was like 20 years ago. And it, I was very unhappy about it because um, it was not the sort of thing I wanted to do. And I was at this job just to make money. And in the group, in the very front was this, was Susan Laurie Parks. And, um, and you were so exceptional in that class. I'll never forget it. Like you, at the very end of the whole class, they asked us to write a question like, what are our objectives? And everyone was like, oh, you know, I hope I can finish my airplane models or, you know, whatever it was people wanted to do. And then there was one person who had a, a line about world peace. It was like this very complicated, concept and I thought oh my god this woman is unbelievable like I knew immediately that it was you and so I just want to say you're really an inspiration I mean you are incredible human thank being you. and we all appreciate it so thank, thank you. you thank you come back and keep working okay Vita yeah thanks you bet no 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 yeah yeah <laughs> yes. all right hey yeah. bye yeah okay come on uh, thanks, all right Vita. Okay. Thank, thank you thank you okay all right, next we've got Isaiah. Cool. Isaiah, are you, are you unmuted? I'm you are. Cool, thank you. Um, question is, so I've been coming this whole week and I'm taking a playwriting class and working on a play and I find myself, and not just with the play that I'm writing, but just in general, I find myself, um, like I'll sit down to write, just sort of blanket sit down to write. Like, and and what I'm what I'm going to sit down to write isn't isn't as important to me. Like I just I just sort of find myself um, integrating like journal entries into my play, into like other projects that I'm working on, and and there just doesn't there doesn't seem to be much like. Um, there's not like a clear delineation in my mind between like my experiences that I journal about and like the things I write about in my plays. And, and I find that sometimes that like creates characters who are like very real and it's helpful or whatever, but other times it feels um, like I'm just trying to recreate myself and I'm being somehow lazy. I don't know, I'm, I, I guess my question is like, I'm, I ha I'm having a hard time like drawing that boundary of like when to, when when it's productive to like just sort of integrate whatever like events like there are moments where like a friend will say something to me and I'll say oh that would be great to put in a play and then I'll just like put it in a play and sometimes that works and sometimes it feels lazy and I guess I'm wondering about like where that line is um yeah. right right so how do you how, when, when should you incorporate 
uh, your real life into a play and when it, or when is that just lazy? Sure, yeah. Sure, sure. If you're writing uh, every day, right? Or almost every day. Yeah. And you're working on something, you're working on a play or a song or a novel or whatever, musical, whatever. Uh, the word lazy um, doesn't appropriately describe what it is that you're doing. Right? I'm just telling you. Okay. 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 Yeah. <laughs> okay. You, so, 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 um, you know, uh, something happens like you see a dog jump through a flaming hoop out in the middle of Washington Square Park. Dang, that'd be good in a play. That's not lazy. That's being observant. Hello. Okay. It's being okay. observant. You're looking. I mean, Samuel Pepys. You know Samuel Pepys? No. He, well, it's okay. He wrote a really famous diary, yo. A diary. Wow. People have been reading it. it. was like, when did he write the diary? Like 1600s or something shit like that. I don't know when. Anyway, if someone knows. And people are still, that's a diary, you know? Um, people write memoirs, you know, lots of like Joan Didion, right? You know Joan Didion? You don't know yeah. her? Well, look her up. Okay, she's cool, right? She writes about her, her life. And so do many, 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 many people. Those of us who say we don't write about our life do some epic weaving, right. you know what I mean? It's always about me, but it's never about me, right? Okay, so we all have different takes on that. What I'm really con interested in is your call, the fact that you call yourself lazy, which is unnecessary. Okay. Okay, so replace it with something else, like interested, like observant, like, wow, enraptured, charmed, fascinated, with what your friend just said. I guess, yeah, I guess I just feel like this pressure to create characters, not from like the thing that they just said, but from some like composite map, a map like a map that I'm imagining that like combines. Yeah. Okay. Who taught you that? Yo, is that, <laughs> is that what you're, is that what you guys are being taught in your playwriting class? I don't want to, you know. No, 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 no. The class is essentially just like a place where I'm a, I'm held accountable to write ten pages a week, like, I, and then we read the pages and sort of. But, um. So yeah, so do that. Do what? Do write the ten pages a week yeah. and then read the play and then be accountable and do okay. that. wherever you get them, as long as you're not stealing them from Vita. <laughs> I mean, okay. that's not allowed. But as long as you're not stealing them from somebody, yeah. Then okay. it's all good. I mean, if you if you say to your friend, "Oh, I'm going to use that line in a play of mine." That's technically, it's not like stealing their work. If your friend has a line of that in their play or song or novel already, then it is stealing their work. So know the yeah. difference. But we can okay. watch real life and we can, we can, we, we're catching butterflies, you know? You know? Yeah. Butterfly net, and that's okay. That, that's all right. Um, you, if you take it in and you, you like, don't do this. I'm just saying, I'm making, but if you stick it in, it comes in dude, and it goes, Look, ooh, look, ooh, doo, right? It's gone through you, right? Mm -hmm. And by passing through you, it has changed, right? Yeah. Okay? okay, so you've had an effect on this line of dialogue that you kind of heard from a friend or on the street. I see, and okay. That's what that's what we do, okay? Yeah, that's but the, and then when like I take things from my journal, it often feels like the sorry it often feels like the um like the material is somehow like too close to me you know is that bad like it i guess that's just up for me to decide like, yeah yeah i'm just like no like that yeah it's okay yeah i mean it's okay for it to be close to you it's okay for it to be not close to you okay okay just your job is to write what is it 10 pages a week and be accountable yeah. for that. That's your job. So whatever, I'll use a bad word, shit, that you're putting in the way of doing your job, <laughs> it's just some bullshit. Okay. 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 And Thank so, you so much. You're welcome. Just clear the bullshit out of the way. Stay focused on the task at hand. Whatever the little voice is in your head. Oh, you're being lazy, Isaiah. Oh, you're, it's too close to you. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Right? Do your work. Thank you. Thank okay? you very much. And Thank keep you. coming back in and we'll keep you accountable. Cool. As best we can. Okay. Thank you. We can go a little longer, you guys, because I'm my. Oh, you muted yourself. Oh, you're good. Okay.
Um, all right. Thanks, Isaiah. Um, we're going to uh, go to Catherine. Catherine, are you unmuted? Yes, I hope so. Is yes. This... OK. Um, so you talked a bit. First of all, thank you. Um, you talked a bit about this yesterday, but I'm wondering if you sort of get to know how your characters speak through what they want, which you referenced a bit yesterday, or if you um, if you get to know what the characters want through how they speak, if that's sort of maybe more how you start out sometimes, if it's something in the middle. Um, yeah, I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, I think it's I think it's both. I mean, right? If a character, you know, Josephine says, you know, whatever, ball, 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 ball. <laughs> and, and either she wants a ball, she wants to go to the ball, or she's, you know, well, you know, it it is it does give us a clue about her desires, right? Yeah. So if, she, if you have a character who keeps saying like, "Man, I gotta go outside, man." I gotta go outside and they just keep repeating that then we can guess what it is that they want so it's kind of it comes from a listening to them okay and i mean if you i feel like right now i'm very much in the listening stage like i'm hoping they tell me what what they want to do and then i just kind of bow to their interest but is there a point when i should kind of step back and draw up like you know, what do I want? Um, maybe to impose that more on them or? Well, you can ask them. They might be kind of shy. <laughs> you know, one of your characters, I keep, the name Josephine keeps popping me. Josephine, yeah, she doesn't talk much. She's just sitting over here, like, you know, not doing anything. You're like, hey girl, what do you want? She's not talking to you. Some characters have to be coaxed, mm -hmm. controlled, invited into the conversation that is your play or your novel or your song or whatever, you know? Yeah. So you can strike up a conversation with one of your oh, imaginary friends. Okay. Because that's what they are. Yeah, I have, I have a lot of time to yeah. do that. Yeah, so, we all do. Yeah. We're just sitting around talking to our imaginary friends. Right. You know? Yeah. And making new ones. Yeah. Because we, we can't make any friends outside. <laughs> so I'll make some imaginary friends right here. Oh, it's, it's, it's the writer's paradise. Yeah. Right? So you can talk to these imaginary friends, these characters, and say, what do you want? Okay. Why, why are you here? What are you doing in my play or my novel? You know? And some of them might be kind of aggressive and mean. Don't let that stop you. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Great. Awesome. Thanks, Catherine. Um, all right, next we have Danielle. Danielle, are you unmuted? Oh, um, I hear you. You do hear me? Yeah. Okay, cool. Do you see me? We see you. Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> Hi. Um, Hi. First of all, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, oh, thank you for I'm, being here. I'm, I am moved everybody's questions and your responses to them and I'm embarrassed to be speaking up and and asking this question because I, I I don't know but um, I, I just I have experience writing I've gone to school for it I've you know I've read lots of books and I've done it and I'm at a place where I, you know I stopped for a long time because I was in a dark place and a lot of what mm. was coming out I didn't feel mm. like sharing with the world and I also, then I just like ran out of ideas and I feel like the, the voice that used to be playful in my mind and um, give me access to things, a little person in, in every room or conversation that used to kind of like be like, oh, this is a story. This is an interesting character. You know, that person feels like completely gone now. And when you're talking about Vita, about the people whose creativity dried up and I'm like, oh my God, like I, I, I'm not a power person. I'm not going to go after anybody's thing, but I, I miss that part of myself. And I'm wondering if, I guess my question is, is there a way to resuscitate that part and that the writer, you know, that, that loved it and was engaged with writing um, and how to kind of get away from this, like this blank that I feel. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's a beautiful question. That's a beautiful, beautiful question, Danielle. And I'm so glad you asked it. 
Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. So how do we, how do we invite that voice, that person, that writer part of ourselves or that creative part of ourselves back into our lives? The good news is, I'll just call her a, a, a she, that's okay, they, I'll call her they, that's better. The good news is, is they, they haven't left. They're still in your life. I'm gonna write that down. <laughs> the good news is that that part of yourself is still in your life. A hundred percent, you know why? Because you're in this chat room or whatever it is. You have asked us to be part of your squad. You're talking to me, yeah. right? So the good news is that that part of yourself never left. They're just really quiet. Yeah. Maybe they're sad. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're scared. Not sure, you know what I mean? And the why they left is not, so impor not as important right now as the how we can invite them back. Um, and you don't have to tell, don't tell us the name of that person or that, you know, if you have a name for them or an image for them, but try to formulate that. If you don't have a name for them, think of one. Don't, you don't tell us because this is a big room, you know? Yeah. Okay. So think of the name for them. Have you ever written them a letter? No. Mm -mm. Okay. Because we talked with Catherine a minute ago about striking up a conversation with some of her characters. Yeah. So this, this person, this entity, um, this creative part of yourself is your ace, boon, coon, number one imaginary friend, right? That's not their name. That's just who they are, <laughs> right? Yeah. Right? And, they, and behind them, they have millions and millions of workers like them who are working on your behalf to help you manifest and fabricate and make beautiful things but for some reason they're quiet so talk to them okay every day yeah because that's what I this know is doing for me it's like good. the past 20 minutes is like oh, oh my god you know it's helping me to i mean lots of times i'm just writing nonsense but at least it's like engaging my heart again you know good good can you write can you use this time uh to i mean here's an assignment kind of thing but can you use this time these 20 minutes five days a week and then work 20 minutes over the weekend saturday and sunday by yourself to write them a letter doesn't yeah. have to be long doesn't have to make sense you know, yeah. it doesn't have to be publishable and all those things <laughs> we lay on ourselves to keep us from doing our work Mm -hmm. It just has to be, hi, uh, you know, imaginary friend, whatever their name is. I'm thinking about you right now. Mm -hmm. Whatever. They're your lover. Yeah. You know, not to displace a, a real, you know, per, uh, you know, SO and your significant other in your life, you know. Yeah. But they're your, it's God. It's, see, I, in the background, I have the hand of God. Can you see? Yeah. That? That's beautiful. Yeah, see? I got it from a flea market. Yeah, that's great. It's like gold tinfoil. And then behind him, underneath that, there's like something that looks like the sunshine. That's a, a, a thing I made with James Baldwin in the middle of it. He was my teacher. And oftentimes I feel like I reach back and say, hold my hand. This person, this entity in your life, Danielle, wants to hold your hand and they can't quite reach it. Okay, that's so beautiful. Thank okay. you so but much. It's yeah. true, it's true. And you prove to them that you're willing to do the work by showing up every day or as often as you can okay i could do that yeah okay and just keep coming back here because we your squad okay <laughs> hey. uh, thank okay. you so much you're welcome so much awesome thank you danielle yeah maybe one, one more we can go a little over today yeah I I'm excluding, but okay. all right next we've got daniel daniel all right daniel you you're hey, on daniel. hi am i on hi, yeah yes you are Hi, oh my God, I'm so excited to speak with you. Thank you, thank you. Wait, did you just say James Baldwin was your teacher? Oh my this God. This is not about me, Daniel. So okay. Okay. We, I just wanted to mention it because there he is right there. Okay. I know, it's just crazy because I, yeah, because I, um, okay, yeah. Um, I summoned his quote today, it was very great. Um, but 
my question is I'm working on a screenplay with my sister right now and I am an actor and she is a poet and uh, we're, you know, we're getting really jazzed about this pilot and we're, we're in a space where we're ready to share some pages. And this sort of connects to like, how do you share your pages while also protecting your content with strangers? Because we have two ways we can do it. There's this film space that we're a part of that we wanna share our pages to. And then we also sort of wanna just like curate a group of friends and close, artist community. Um, how do you listen to those groups differently? How do you know when you're ready to share your work? How do you protect yourself in process of like starting to let it come out? Great questions, Daniel. Um, uh, here, here's the thing. Are you, have you written to the end? It's a pilot. So it's what, 50 pages, 60 pages? Yes. Yeah, so we have um we have it outlined okay throughout, and we have about 20 pages okay like the first the first act second act three four and five are still being developed okay okay i would suggest i mean i have a couple answers one i would suggest that you finish writing it before you share it with people okay okay a lot of times we want to share our work before it's finished because we want some applause or some patting on the back, right? We want to hear that we're doing a good job. Right now, why don't you, because you have these concerns about protecting your work, why don't you seek approval and applause from your writing partner, who is your sister, okay? Mm -hmm. And those of us who are writing alone, why don't we seek approval? You can seek approval from your significant other, you know, someone who's not the writer, right? You can seek an approval from a very, very trusted friend. You can also seek approval from your imaginary friend. That's another thing that imaginary friends are good for. Guess what? They don't just, they're not just like the muse, right? They can also be amused and give you like feedback. Yeah, oh, hey, that's really good. You can use them for that too. Okay, mm -hmm. so right now, um, as we say in cooking, I don't really, I, well, one thing I cook really well is popcorn. My son will attest to that, yes. Um, but keep the lid on it, okay? Keep the lid on it, Daniel, until it's, until it's ready. Don't be taking the lid off to show people, look at my popcorn, ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Right, it's funny, right? It's not gonna yeah. really be as effective as if you keep the lid on and shake it, right? Yeah. I make it old school, I put the popcorn on the stove, okay? Yeah. So I would suggest that finish it first, get to the end. Okay. Encourage each other along the way. Okay. Mm -hmm. Allow the work to encourage you. That's what I mean about your imaginary friend. Your imaginary friend starts to, when you make a, a, a work, they, they take up residence in that work and they shelter in space and they're right there. And anytime you need encouragement, look to the work and the work will give you encouragement. If, if you don't have a writing partner, in this case, you have both. Okay. Finish the work. And then when you want to send it out, when it's finished, meaning when you have a first draft that's completed, not just an outline, then you show it to very trusted people. Okay. You can yeah. also, if you have, you're an actor, maybe you have an agent or maybe your sister does or a literary agent. Okay. But I would start not by trying to go get an agent, but by showing it to very trusted people who create a community of people who know that it's yours. Okay. Also copyright the material, of course. You can also register it with the Writers Guild if it's a screenplay. Okay. Or a teleplay, you know? I mean, if you're a member of the Writers Guild, I'm not quite sure how all that works because. Okay, but definitely look into copywriting and yeah. Writers Guild before we go into a space of people we don't know. I would definitely say so. Okay, thank you. I would you. definitely say, and you sit, and then you put, you know, your name as the writer at the, on the cover page and then you put copyright, you know, whatever, 2020 all rights reserved. Do you know what I mean? You just do that so that it's, it's legally, visibly mm -hmm. yours and your sister's, okay? okay? That's very, very important. And it's not expensive or anything. And, you know, um, I would, uh, yeah. And I just would keep writing until you're done, but that's the main thing, okay? Mm -hmm. Write the damn thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. We can do one more. We can go to 615 if anybody wants to talk. Great. Okay. One more it is. Um, Chris, I'm going to unmute you. Chris McNally. Are you here? Hi. Hi, Chris. Thank you. Okay. Right. Good. Um, I, um, I write narrative poetry and a lot of it is oh. in dialogue. And some of it flows out like it was all there, just boom. And then other parts of it are just stuck and they make like a knot. And I keep going into that knot because I believe there's a lot in there. But I wanted to ask you about that. Um, how you do you experience that in your own writing? And then how do you deal with the, the, the stuck bits that feel like there's something in them, if you know what I mean? That's so beautiful, Chris. That's a, my, my hair, I have dreadlocks. So everything you know, uh, coming out of my head is a tangle. It's all thing. <laughs> and I just work with it. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, sometimes we think as, as artists or writers that, you know, if it comes out, then that's really good. And the stuff that's is not going to be so good, right? But we know differently, don't we, Chris, that sometimes the stuff that you have to untangle is equally beautiful and valuable as the stuff that sort of just pours out. Um, Patience is a good tool when you have something that's tangled, you know, be patient with this. Um, sometimes I, okay. and patience is good. Also, you know, change up. Sometimes I, uh, where I'll show you what I'm working on today. Look, sometimes I work on paper. You saw me work on the notebook sometimes. And it w w even works, it works with all forms. You put it out, lay it out in note cards, like, First this, ha I mean, narrative poetry, first this happens, then this happens, and this happens, then this tangled thing happens. Then this other thing happens, okay. you know? You can take these cards, you write them down on little index cards. You can put them in your pocket. You can go for a walk, right? Don't get too near anybody. Okay. You're walking, you're thinking about it, right? You can set your timer, you can say, I'm gonna spend just 30 minutes re re reading it and reading it aloud. And then I'm gonna put it away for the day. You know, to change up on it, right? It's like, it, it's again, it's like we talked about in the beginning. It's like dating. You wanna try a lot of different tactics to woo them, you know? We are, we are wooers of words, aren't we? Come here, you know? Um, you know what I'm saying? We have to we have to do a lot of wooing. Sometimes, sure. Sometimes it happens instantaneously, but other times, it needs effort. There have been things that I've written very quickly. There have been things that have taken years to write, and I love them all the same. You know, I think they're equally like beautiful. Okay, but thanks for coming here. It's thank it's you very much. Thanks, Chris. Absolutely. Shall we come back tomorrow? Let's come back tomorrow. Let's come back tomorrow. Um, as a reminder, if you want to sign up to be in the Zoom, you can go to publictheater.org and there are sign up sheets there and we'll release next week's on Friday at noon. Thanks Bye, everybody. everybody. See you tomorrow. Thanks. Thank you. Ah, oh, the heart. Yay. Thank you. Thanks, Mo. <laughs> Thanks, Audrey. Thanks, Miranda. Thanks, SLP.